welcome to Chalk Talk, a weekly preview of West Tennessee football featuring the Jackson Sun sports team here on jacksonsun.com. Hey everybody, welcome to week two of the high school football Chalk Talk here at jacksonsun.com alongside sports editor Brandon Shields. I'm Craig Thomas. A lot of good games to discuss here for week two. There's a few of them. Third week of the season. We're going to start with one right here in Jackson as Northside Indians host Covington. Yeah, last year, the first two games we're actually going to talk about, the, the, the teams in those games met twice last year, once in the regular season and once again in the playoffs. Uh, and, and this one, Northside kind of took one on the chin last year against Covington, down at Covington, 41-19. to but Then went down there, back down there in the first round of the playoffs. And and beat them, I think, 32-29 to 29 in one of the more memorable games of the year. And uh, this year it's a different north side team. Covington isn't exactly world beaters like they have been the last couple of years, so this could be a pretty competitive game. Um, I was at north side last week, and I know Tab Bell, he, while they're 2-0, he was still uh, really unhappy with a lot of the mistakes that, that his young players were making, he, and he's, he's hoping that he and the coaches have can correct a lot of those mistakes going into this week and getting started with district play against the defending district champion. I uh, share arguably the game of the year in, the, uh, in this area is the state semifinals, which was a rematch of a regular season game between Trinity Christian and Adamsville. Adamsville won it, went on to the state finals. They'll be playing again here in week two. What are you looking for for that game up at TCA? Well, last year they played in week two, and it was – I don't know if I called this game last year an instant classic, but it was a good game. Uh, the TCA won 28 to 21. They went on to win the district. Then they met again 12 weeks later uh, in week 14 in the semifinal, state semifinals that Adamsville won uh, in a game that really resembled uh, uh, one of those, uh, well, probably, uh, the Rose Bowl from a few years ago when USC and Texas played, where it's just really one of those classic shootouts between two good offenses um, that Adamsville came out on the winner of. Um, the good thing about this game is that nearly every player on both teams, uh, they're all back, uh, with the exception, so a few key exceptions mm-hmm. like Zach Neary and, and Jacob Wallace and Colton Williams uh, at Adamsville, and Chase Diggs and uh, uh, Lucas Rogers uh, at TCA. But for the most part, you know, if there was, say, 80 people on Adamsville's roster and, and 40 on TCA's, out of those 120 players, about 105 or back. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm interested to see how Adams was going to try to do without Zach Neary there. They hadn't really had a running back to kind of step up and say, hey, I'm going to be the guy to replace Zach Neary. And I don't know if they have anybody that they can depend on to run, rush for three touchdowns in the third quarter like they did with Neary last year in the semifinals. But uh, it'll definitely be a good test for either one. And probably winner of this game will go on to win District 15A. Liberty and Haywood both had uh, some, some games against very tough competition last week. Liberty and Haywood will be playing each other. What are you looking for from that game? Well, first off, I want to see how Haywood responds from the week that they've had. Um, playing last week against Dyersburg without head coach Ernie Jackson, who uh, wound up being suspended for three days. He was reinstated on Thursday, according to a release early this week. Uh, we're shooting this on Tuesday, um, and that release was, was sent out earlier today, so we're assuming by Thursday he'll be back coaching. Uh, how they responded to that. Liberty, they played against Brentwood Academy and, and got beat by 24 points, which was competing better than they did last year. Um, uh, Haywood should have competed better with Liberty last year if they uh, turned it over, I think, five times. Uh, so if they can control, uh, take better care of the ball, we could see a closer game this year. Jackson Christian's had a very rough go of it for the first couple of weeks. They'll be playing a Scotts Hill team that has had it, done a nice job here the first couple of weeks, looking for some bigger things from a program that maybe hasn't done a whole lot historically. What are you expecting from that game? Well, history's going to be made either way in this game. Either Todd Rowland, Jackson Christian's first-year head coach, is going to get his first win as a head coach, or Scotts Hill is going to break their school record and get their third win of the season. They've all they've always been two or eight, two and eight or worse uh, since they started uh, six years ago, I think. Uh, yeah, 2008, I think, was their first varsity uh, uh, season of football. Um, so, but not only would they get their third win, but they'd be 3-0. and uh, Makes you wonder just how good the Scotts Hill team is. Granted, Perry County, Gibson County, you wonder how good that competition is. But the fact is, three, four years ago, they, wouldn't have be- they might not have beaten both of those teams. Uh, so they're definitely improving. I guess over the next few weeks, we'll see how much. Carter County got off to a good start last year, had a little bit of a setback at home when a Milan team that had a pretty rough year upset them. They're playing each other again in a pretty highly anticipated game. What are you looking for from Crockett and Milan? I'll go ahead and tell you, if we weren't having a rematch of the Class 2A state semifinals, 
uh, on that night, I'd probably be in Milan. It's going to be a big night. Uh, they're going to honor uh, John Tucker, the legendary coach who passed away last winter. Both teams are 2-0. and Crockett County is coming in led by a guy who played for Coach Tucker at Milan, uh, Kevin Ward. Jeff Morris, he and the rest of the Bulldogs, they want to come back and, and really show that last year was kind of an aberration for the, for the Milan football program. Um, the winner of this game probably – there will be three teams that will be 1-0 and at the end of the night in District 13 AA. But whoever wins in this one will definitely have probably the the, uh, the leg like, up. Yeah, the leg up and the better win just because they've beaten a tougher team. Um, and uh, there's athletes on both sides, Marshall Harrison and, and Skylar Hopewell uh, for Milan. And, of course, Johnny Jones, who's – already approaching uh, he's probably already surpassed 500 yards rushing after two games for the year i've got to go, go and look at those stats but uh they're having both of them is having a good year a couple of the small rural schools uh had a nice start to the season we playing each other in brewston and huntington what are you looking for well brewston's two and zero, uh but they both both of those games have been against smaller one eight I say smaller, against small 1a teams brewston there's not many schools that are smaller than brewston south fulton and McEwen, but brewston beat both of those teams about as badly as you expect a good team to beat them. How good is Brewston? We'll find out against Huntington. Huntington is, they beat Class 4A, Obine County, um, pretty much ran the doors off of them in Week 0, nearly got a win over 3A Westview uh, this past week. That would have been on the road. So Huntington's definitely legit, and we're going to see just how legit Brewston is. Well, this will be their chance to kind of prove that. All right, first things first, we'll talk about some social media stuff for Friday. Definitely some, uh, some, some good advice for you if you want to keep up with the scores. Make sure to check out jacksonsun.com. We'll have uh, halftime updates of some of the games and then the, uh, the uh, full-time updates as well. Um, throughout the games, if you're at one game, maybe you want to see what else is going on, check Twitter. Uh, JS uh, Editor Brandon mm -hmm. will have some scores. JS Writer Michael, JS Writer Craig, and JS Generalist Josh. Um, those are always good options. Our Facebook page as well, our Jackson Sun Sports Facebook, will have uh, stories pretty much as soon as they get up with all the photos and photo galleries and videos and all that good stuff. In addition to those Twitters that you sent out, also about sometime midway through the afternoon, I'll send out a Twitter follow list that will have freelancers at, at different games, and, and then they'll be tweeting out from their games as well. Right, so we hope you have a great Friday. Enjoy week two, and uh, keep uh, following us here at jacksonsun.com. See you.